Good morning. Welcome back to our Friday morning prayers. It's good to be with you. I hope you've all had a good summer. And uh, we certainly know the summer's over now, don't we? Oh dear. It's like um, the flood again. But anyway, let's just take a moment to come into our Lord's presence, to be still and focus our hearts and minds on him, allowing him to have his way with us this morning. Just take a few moments to be quiet and be still. Thank you, Lord, that your word says wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you are here with us. And we just thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you are our God. And we worship you once more this morning. Let's begin with some words of worship. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Mirabar, on that day at Messiah in the, the, in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof. Though they had seen my works forty years long, I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Well, we don't want to go that way, do we? But uh, if we keep our eyes on Jesus and commit to him, then we can't go far wrong. So we're going to begin today with Psalm 1, 1, 146. So one Psalm 146. <clears throat> we continue our worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I'll sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men, who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed, he gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. He frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generation. Praise the Lord. So we don't want to be in this psalm like in our first words, mortal men who 
when their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. If our hope is in the Lord, then we can we know our hope is in eternal life. But we need to make sure that um, our hearts are clean. So we need to come before him and seek his mercy and forgiveness in our lives once more. So let's just take a moment to reflect on where we've gone wrong in the past few days or weeks. Just bring to mind those times when we've let him down and we need to come to him and say sorry. So together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been and help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. When we're able to say sorry to our God, he's able to forgive, release us from those, those sin that binds us. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, that's good, isn't it? To be forgiven. But we all must always remember that when God forgives us, we need to forgive others. It's part of the condition of being forgiven. So we're now going to look at um, Mark chapter 7. And verses 24 to 37. So it's Mark chapter 7, 24 to 37. <clears throat> Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah. In fact, as soon as she heard about it, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian. Bonicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of De the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly walk, talk, and they begged him to bless his, place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephapion, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened and his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone 
but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were over overwhelmed. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. That is quite overwhelming, isn't it? The but then he seems quite rude when he speaks to that woman. What the words he chooses to say, but it brings about a, a real faith in the in the woman, and she responds humbly to Jesus. But Jesus, on his travels, has come to a place near Tyre. He is now in Gentile territory. He has gone into someone's house, hoping for some peace and quiet, no doubt. But this isn't to be. His healings and miracles have made him a celebrity, and people not only want to see him at his work, but want healings for themselves. So people flock to the house, including a woman, whose little daughter is possessed by an evil spirit. She falls at Jesus' feet and begs him to drive out the demon from her daughter. Jesus then makes a surprising statement, which is a bit of a put-down for the woman, comparing her to a dog. He tells her, first let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Dogs were the common term for Gentiles by the Jews in those days. So Jesus seems to be saying that what he was to give is only for Jews, not for Gentiles. We we'll have to excuse the banging work. I'm at the church at the moment. And there's work progressing. Hopefully it'll be done by the end of the day, but it's got a lot to be done yet. Back to the talk. But the woman is not put off by this and comes back at, at Jesus saying, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. The woman isn't, indi isn't indignant at being called a dog, in, at being called a dog, but accepts it, showing her humility in front of Jesus. She knows her position and accepts it. Jesus sees this and tells her that the demon has left her daughter. And when she returns home, her daughter is normal again. Jesus then returns to Galilee, where some people bring him a man who is deaf and can hardly talk. They beg Jesus to lay a hand on him. He takes the man aside for some privacy and puts his fingers into his ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. Now, this seems a strange thing for us these days, for Jesus to do that. But in those days, spittle was accepted as having healing properties. Jesus looks up to heaven and says, be opened. The man is then able to hear and speak. Jesus commands the people not to tell anyone, but this is pointless. The people are so excited at what they have just witnessed. Well, I should be the same for us today, shouldn't it? When Jesus comes into our lives, we should be so excited that we can't help but tell others. This is what we're called to do when we come to faith. We'll be able to tell others instead of Jesus telling us to be quiet. He tells us to go out into all the world and proclaim the gospel. So let's turn to our Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, open our lives to your goodness. Open our eyes to your presence. Open our ears to your call. Open our hearts to your love. Open our lips to your praise. Open us to your glory. Amen. And the refrain for today is, when I say it, our God is here.
if you respond with, he comes to save us. We give you thanks and praise for your life-giving and life-extending love. May your church help others to extend their lives and to rejoice in your world. We pray for all who are working for justice and freedom of captives, for all who seek to bring food to the hungry and comfort to the lonely. Lord, as you raise us up, help us to lift others out of their troubles. Our God is here. He comes to save us. We remember all who have worked hard and achieved nothing, all who have laboured labored in vain, all whose work has been frustrating, all whose work or livelihood has been destroyed. We pray for the unemployed, the homeless, all who hunger and thirst. Our God is here. He comes to save us. God, strengthen the bonds of community where we live. Direct all who have dealings with groups at the care of, of individuals. We pray for all who feel isolated or cut off from others. We pray for our own homes and loved ones. Our God is here. He comes to save us. We pray for all who have difficulty in communicating with others. Yeah, I'm having that problem. <laughs> Those with hearing and speech difficulties and the blind. We remember all who are mentally or severely physically handicapped. We pray for those caring for children with autism or adults with learning difficulties, for all who are finding their lives restricted through illness. Our God is here. He comes to save us. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You have opened for us the kingdom of heaven. We remember before you the whole company of saints and pray for our loved ones departed. Our God is here. He comes to save us. Let's come together as our Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others, that those that trespass against us. And Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. Good to be back. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you don't get too wet out there. And look forward to seeing you on Sunday, maybe. There'll be plenty of uh, things to look at with all the work that should be finished or nearly finished. So yeah, look to see you on Sunday. But before we go, we must have a blessing. <clears throat> Lord, touch our hearts with, with his love and open our life to his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Okay, enjoy your day. Love to you all. Bye. <laughs>